All right guys, today this video is going to cover tile patterns and how we make predictions as to what will be in future figure numbers of our tile pattern and also how we can look at a number of tiles and determine which figure would have that many tiles. And so the one we're gonna look at today, we're given that figure one has these five tiles in it and figure two has these seven and then figure three is going to have these nine tiles. And so by looking at that, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna figure out how is it growing or how is it getting different from one figure to the next. When I look at figure one and I compare it to figure two, I'll notice that this square and this square are going to be new. So it looks like it's growing by those two. When I then look from figure two to figure three, I once again notice that this one down here is new and this one down here is new. So what I can do then is assume that it's growing by those two tiles each time. So when I think backwards and I want to say, okay, well, what would figure zero look like? It would have to be that this square and this square in figure one are new, which would mean that my figure zero is going to be these three tiles right here. A good way for us to organize our thoughts in math is to look at a data table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a data table. And in this data table, I'm going to be comparing two pieces of data. The first piece of data I'm going to compare is basically what is the figure number. And I'm going to compare that to the number of tiles that are in that figure. So I know that based on the pictures I've been given, um, I know how many are in figure one. I know that figure one has five. I know that figure two has seven. And I know that figure three has nine. I also, if I thought backwards, I know now that figure zero is going to have three tiles. So what I can see is that as each of the figure numbers increases by one, the pattern that's happening is that the number of tiles is increasing by two. And we saw when we colored it in with the pink highlighter where those were increasing. So then what I can do is I can say, well then how many would be in figure five? Well, and a really easy way to get that information would to say, okay, well after three is four, and after figure four would be five. And I can just continue my pattern as well. So as it increases by one figure number, it increases by two tiles. That would give me 11 tiles in figure four. And then as it increases by one figure number, it increases by two tiles. So that would give me 13 tiles in figure five. I could easily keep going with this pattern until I reach however many figure numbers I wanted. I could keep increasing the figure number by one and the number of tiles by two and I could keep going as far as I want. But what if I didn't want to do all that work and instead I just wanted to know what would the 100th figure have, how many tiles? And so at this point, we like to think algebraically, how can we start figuring out a rule that would help us take the figure number and relate it to the number of tiles? And so if you guys recall, you learned a really cool shortcut and that shortcut was taking the equation y equals mx plus b. So in y equals mx plus b, x refers to our figure number, and it relates to y, which is the number of tiles in that figure. Then as you guys worked with these patterns, you started to realize some awesome shortcuts. For instance, that B represented the number of tiles that existed in figure zero. And then you also realized that M represented the growth or how many new tiles it was getting each time. So if we think back to the pattern we looked at, we noticed that figure zero was going to have three tiles. And then we also noticed that every time it grew by a figure number, it grew by two tiles. So what that tells us is that our B, or the number of tiles in figure zero for this pattern, is going to be 
3, and that our m, or the growth, is going to be 2. So now we can write a rule for this, which is y equals 2x plus 3, where x still represents the figure number, y still represents the tiles in that figure number, 3 is the number of tiles in figure 0, and the 2 is how much it's growing between each of the figures. So if we go back to that question we had, how many tiles are going to be in figure 100, we can now use our rule to help us figure that out. So we can substitute 100 in for x because 100 is the figure number we're trying to figure out. And so this becomes y equals 2 times 100 plus 3. If I look at my order of operations, I'm going to do multiplication before addition. So y equals 200 plus 3, or y equals 203. And what that tells me is that figure 100 is going to have 203 tiles. And instead of having to continue a data table out, I can just use a rule to make this process easier. Another thing I can use the rule for is helping me predict or understand which figure I'm looking at if I know the number of tiles. So remember, our data table related to us, the figure number, which was our x, and it compared it to the number of tiles, which was our y. So we knew that in figure 0, there were three tiles. We knew that in figure 1, there were five tiles. We just figured out that in figure 100, there are 203 tiles. So what if we wanted to know which figure number had 159 tiles? Well, just by looking at our data, we know that it has to be less than figure 100 because 100 has 203, but it has to be more than figure 1, and that has 5. We could totally guess and check until we got there, or we could actually use that rule we came up with to help us. So remember that rule was y equals 2x plus 3, where y represents the number of tiles, x represents our figure number, 2 was the growth that was happening, and 3 was how many tiles were in figure 0. So instead of substituting a value in for x, or the figure number, I don't know it, I'm going to go ahead and substitute in for y, which is the number of tiles. And so what I can do is I can rewrite this rule as 159, because that's the number of tiles I'm trying to figure out, has to be equal to 2 multiplied by the figure number plus 3. This just becomes a one variable equation that I can solve. And so once again, we're going to draw our line through our equal sign. And remember, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. If my goal is to figure out the value of x, I need to undo what's being done. And so I need to first go ahead and get rid of this plus 3. And I can do that by balancing in a negative 3. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. In making zero pairs, 159 take away 3 becomes 156. And then the 3 minus the 3 makes my 0 pairs, so I'm left over here with 2x. That next legal move that I'm going to want to go ahead and do is to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to group everything into two groups. When I have two x's grouped into two groups, I just get a single x. And when I group 156 into two groups, I get 78. So what that tells me is that figure 78 is going to be the figure that has 159 tiles. I can totally check myself by saying the rule says that if I take 2 times the figure number and add 3, I should get the number of tiles. So if I take 2 and multiply it by 78, I get 156 and 156 added the 3 is 159.